Hey, you out there searching for a solar system model to make with your kids or group of learners? Maybe you're a homeschooling parent looking to make one at home. The problem with making a real life scale version is that you can't nail all the attributes at once. So here we are, we're going to make a digital scale model that uses Scratch. In this video specifically, we're gonna head over to NASA and grab their planetary fact sheet so we can use some real data. We'll clean it up in a Google sheet and then import that into some lists in Scratch, ready to use and scalify. What's more, if you're a teacher or a homeschooling parent, maybe you're looking for some printable solar system worksheets that you can use with your group of learners. In that case, I've got you covered. Just go check the description for a link to those. All right, I can hear the countdown, so let's blast off together in just a sec. Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer, and I help curious learners just like you along on their learning journeys. Welcome to this series on a solar system model that we're going to make in Scratch. Just a bit of housekeeping first up to orient us to what we're going to be doing. Here I've created an empty sprite and I've called it README and I'm going to try and use this as a sort of a best practice going forward because I know when I jump into projects, it can be really hard to sort of orient yourself to what's going on. And in this README empty sprite, I've got here a bit of a plan or an outline of what I'm hoping to cover in this video. So I've just broken down all these sort of videos into these comments. You'll see the first videos are a little bit more padded out than the later videos because we need some wriggle room. We need to be able to adjust and become flexible. So this video is a little bit different in that I haven't actually made this project yet. I'm gonna be doing it on the fly with you. And that's kind of new for me because I sort of like to make these projects first. I've had a bit of a play around, but I haven't gone ahead and created the finished product. So I think that'll be a great opportunity for all you out there to just see how I go about creating a project. And I reckon there's gonna be some debugging stuff that will come along the way. And I think that'll be a useful video as well. It's Surfing Scratchy from the future here. And in fact, we get an opportunity to check out one of the blunders I made in this video and debug it. So let's shift our focus to this particular video. And in this video, focusing on this comment up here, we're gonna be using the NASA fact sheet to create a scale model of a certain attribute of the planets in our <laughs> solar system. There we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is head over to the NASA website and obtain this fact sheet. So let's jump over to the browser. Now that I'm over here in the browser, I'm just gonna type in NASA planet fact sheet. And the very first one with a link down here with planetary fact sheet. If you're in the US and you want to use the US units, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to be using the metric system because I'm based here in Australia and that's what's familiar to me. That'll take us to a page with all the planets listed out here. Of course, Pluto isn't now classified as a planet, it's a dwarf planet. And we've also got the moon in here as well. Down the left hand side, we've got all these different attributes of these planets that we're going to visualize in Scratch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of this and copy it. Hopefully you know how to do that. You can just control or command C. And I'm gonna head over to Google Sheets. I've already signed in here. If you don't have a Google account, no drama, just open up Excel. You could do the same thing or just go quickly sign up now to get a Gmail account. So I'm just going to type into the browser sheets.new, which is a nice little hack and that will just open up to a default new Google Sheet. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to control V and paste that information that we grabbed and I've just pasted in that data. Okay, you may have noticed here that our headings are just offset by one column. So I'm just going to select all of those headings. I'm going to cut them and just shift it across. Then I'm gonna go ahead and delete the moon. Sorry moon, but we're not gonna be working with you, but we're gonna keep Pluto because we like Pluto. Okay, now I'm gonna do something that's gonna seem a little bit strange, but it will make sense as we progress the video. So I'm just going to select from Mercury, so that says B1 cell, B1, and I'm gonna select it all the way down to the bottom of cell here of J19, Pluto and the global magnetic field. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to create a new sheet, I'm gonna add it. Then I'm going to paste special here, and I'm going to paste transposed. And what that has done, is instead of having the planets listed out in all these columns, we've listed out the planets in rows. And this will make sense shortly. Okay, I'm just going to add a row above here. I'm gonna go back to that original sheet, select all these values, and then I'm going to copy those again, head over to the sheet, and in the B1 cell here, you guessed it, I'm going to paste transpose and now we've got all of our attributes here lined up with the columns. And I'll just go across here to make sure that they're all in there. Great, this is what we're looking for. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna focus on the sizes of the planets and the particular attribute that we're gonna use is this diameter column. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
copy all the values from Mercury down to Pluto, Control C or Command C. And then I'm going to open up a text editor. You can use any text editor you want, but the one here on the Mac is called Text Edit. And I'm just gonna open that one up, create a new document. Now I'm just going to convert this into a plain text file. You don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna do it there just to get rid of all the styling. And I'm just going to paste the values. So all we have here are just the direct values of the diameters of Mercury, Venus, da da da, -da down to Pluto. So we're gonna save this file. Now I'm gonna save it here, put this folder structure set up and I'm working on the Scratch desktop version. So I'm going ahead and creating different versions of my files, which is good to just to keep some backups. If you're working with the online editor, you do some auto saving, but it could be good practice, capture some versions of your particular file in case something happens to it. So I'm going into data here and I'm going to rename this file. I'm gonna call it diameters. There we go. Now I can just close that. and We'll head back across to Scratch. Now we're back over here in Scratch. I'm gonna jump over to the variables category here. We're going to make a list and we're gonna call this list, you guessed it, diameters. Now the cool thing about that text file is when we right click on this list over here on the stage and we go import, we can find that file that we just created in diameters. We can open it up and it will import all those values in for us. Of course, you could just eyeball it and have both of those documents open side by side and enter those values in but I'm a little bit lazy and we're gonna be doing this for lots of values, so I'm gonna do it this way. Now I've just done that, I've just realized something and we've got a problem with our data here. It's not what I thought it would be. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna jump back over to the browser and go back to our fact sheet here. And you'll see that we've got the fact sheet that's ratio to earth values, which means earth is all one for everything and what we've done is make every value of the celestial body, the planet or the moon, we've made them relative to the value of the Earth, and that isn't what we want. If we go back over to the Google result and we click on the first result of NASA Planetary Fact Sheet, we'll get a different fact sheet, and we're gonna get the metric one for all the value. Now you could probably just go through and repeat the process of what we've done, of copying everything, but I'm just gonna do it a little bit differently just to show you how you can do it just for the diameter. So I'm gonna go in here and copy all these diameter values. Head back over to our fact sheet here. I'm going to paste those values only. Then I'm gonna cut those values. And over here in our diameter, in, the, in our first cell beneath the diameter header, I'm going to paste special and we'll paste the transposed. And you'll see here that we've got all those values and it's formatted it nicely. Now, which one is the moon? Well, hopefully you know the order. You've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, and this one here is the moon. We don't want the moon, remember? So I'm gonna right click it and we're going to delete the cells and shift up. And there you go, you can see that we've also shifted up all these values too. Now we can just go ahead and delete those values that we had. Great. So now that we've got all those values, I can just copy those, open up text edit, get that diameters file, repaste in all those values. Now, if you've got some commas here, you'll need to go ahead and remove those commas because Scratch will only import the first numbers up until that comma. So you wanna make sure that you get rid of those commas there. I'm going to resave that. And then I can just jump back over and import and we'll re-import that file again. And now it's overridden those values and we've got all the diameters of our planets. Of course, the rest of our fact sheet is all out of whack because all these other values are still relative to the Earth. So you might wanna go ahead and recreate this based on that new fact sheet. That's a good opportunity to reinforce what we've just done. Okay, so I actually just went ahead and recreated our second sheet here. Just be wary that there is an extra attribute here for the new planetary fact sheet. You notice that we've got some commas here in our cells. The way to get around that is if you select all the values, just like I'm doing here, go to format, number, and you wanna click plain text. The next thing that you wanna do is do command or control F. We're going to be finding. If you've got some options here, you might just go this sheet, but because I've selected those cells, it's only gonna look in those cells. We're going to find the commas, and there we go, there's the first one, and we just wanna replace them with nothing. So you can see it stripped it. Now that it works, we know we can just replace all, and that's how we can just get rid of the commas. Sweet, let's jump back over to Scratch. Great, we're back over here in Scratch. Let's check in when we're at. So we've got that NASA web sheet, we've imported that data into a Google sheet, exported the rows into a plain text file, and we've imported that now into Scratch list. Now we wanna create a list of planets and variables. And we're gonna do that in the next video because this one's getting a little bit long and it's nice to just sort of chunk it out to keep one video doing one particular thing. Cool, so in that next video, we're gonna be using all these data values of the planets to create some sprites and display the sizes relative to these values.